In the previous video, we have seen uh, clause learning and uh, we said that after adding clause learning in a CPLL, we call the procedure CDCL. So let's look at uh, CDCL in an algorithmic form. Let, let me have a comment about why we would like to change the name. First, when CDCL was discovered around early 2000s, the observed improvement on, on the ability of SAT solvers was significant. SAT solvers were able to solve uh, industrial level problems. So therefore, uh, people suggested that the name should be changed from GPLL to CDCL. The name change is not a gimmick. Uh, it, it is actually, it has, a, it has a profound idea behind it. See, a SAT solver solves a formula by guessing its assignment checking if assignment holds true if it doesn't then it guesses the another assignment and this sequence of attempts defines a particular algorithm that does the set so in dpl this produces a certain kind of sequences in in the case of cdcl the probability distribution of the attempted strings is very distinct Therefore, a DPLL with class learning should be classified as a different algorithm. Therefore, people have decided to give it a new name. So let's write down this algorithm in an algorithm form. So, uh, so just put everything together. So what happens is first you have a formula as input. You maintain few data structures, a model, a partial assignment or model, what is on a decision, current decision level and the D stack, it basically records the, when you made the decision, how big was the sign. Okay. Uh, so first you do, you first, anything you do, you do the unit propagation. It's like uh, unit propagation is like small toolbox is always with you. You make a change in assignment, you say, okay, run unit propagation. So unit propagation applies, say, you know, unit propagation as you've seen. Okay. So uh, we have to uh, do two things, uh, two important things, backtracking and boolean decision, right? So back unit propagation is taken care of by this function call. So you remember DPL has two more tasks, backtracking and this boolean decisions, okay? So let's first analyze boolean decisions. So let's suppose your current model is partial. And uh, what do you do? You say, oh, well, I'm going to pick up a, a I will keep the record. Uh, that what is the size of my model in the decision level DL okay, and then increment the decision level and it decide a random uh, variable uh, which has not been uh, assigned yet in, in the formula F and then as soon as I make changes in decision basically decide what decide will do is add a, a change the assignment M so now what you do you do the unit propagation Now let's look at the backtracking part. You run this loop until uh, you have a, a, the current assignment does not satisfy. Okay, if you decision level is zero, you say, well, I have not decided anything and I reach to a conflict, that means it's clearly unsat. okay? Or what do you do? You analyze the conflict, okay? When you analyze the conflict, you draw a complication graph, you look, collect the, the you backtrack from the conflict to the leaves and then you generate your conflict clause and it will you return a conflict clause C and the decision level you want to go back to because you remember that the conflict clause have some literals and each literal is assigned a, a decision level so you say okay which decision level I want to go back to. So you resize your current uh, assignment to, to the, the, the size of the model when the, that decision was taken, DL was taken, remove the later assignments and uh, you expand your formula with a new clause C. Again, each time you make you make changes, like you you basically what did you do? You you basically resize your model. You add new clauses. Now it's time for unit propagation. So you do the you need to apply the unit propagation again. If unit propagation triggers more uh, conflicts, then you have to go back and do this again. And then you keep going until there is no conflict. Then you move on here, make more decisions, and carry on. Some point of time, either M 
stop being partial and basically assigns all the variables no more variables to be assigned then you go exit or you have found m, m satisfying f then what you do you basically return sand the important thing to notice in this 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 algorithm is unsat is written here okay? and unsat is only written at the decision level zero so how that is going to happen okay? so what will uh, happen is that you make few decisions you learn conflict clause so when you propagate again so things get propagated not because of decisions because of the unit propagation due to these conflict clauses so you are you eventually will making fewer and fewer decisions and creating conflicts early on and eventually if the formula is unsatisfiable you'll make no decision you just do the unit propagation you'll hit the unsatisfiability so this pattern that initially you will uh, you have a longer uh, conflict clauses and slowly slowly they get shorter and shorter and uh, and they're triggering unit propagation more often and eventually without any decision you are hitting uh, unsatisfiability uh, it has to be understood CDCL was uh, invented uh, early 2000s and since then it, the technology has evolved and uh, what has happened is that uh, there's a satisfiability competition starting. Okay. So every year there are different research groups who build uh, SAT solvers and they submit their SAT solver for competitions and uh, the best SAT solver wins. So this thing is in some sort of analysis uh, done around 2013. So what they did, they they collect solver submissions uh, over the years from 2002 to 2013 and then ran out in a batch mark. This is called cactus plus. So what it says is let's suppose for solving each problem I give you 100 seconds. So how many problems are you going to solve? So you can see that as over the years this, this graph is shifting in this direction. And uh, as years are passing by the solvers have become faster and better. So, so this has caused us some kind of mini revolution. Okay, so mini revolution means that now you can use that technology to solve real problems, and it has a significant impact on, like, for example, chip designing, uh, planning, security of crypto cryptography algorithms, and solving various hard problems. With, okay? for example, if you want to schedule classes in a in an institute like IIT Bombay. Now you can use SAT solver to optimally find the scheduling. However, it's not widely deployed, but this technology is possible.